it. It's a Rolex 1500 uh, vintage 1971. Um, if you're watching this, then for you, you can take it for 2.2k. If they watch this interview and come through the interview, 2.2k. I'm, 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 I'm watching the interview. <laughs> <laughs>Our sponsors for the perspective fireway pizza are offering you guys 20% off using our discount code AD20. Use it today, man. Save money, be patterned. We got you. AD20 Fireway Pizza, the perspective. It's been a long time coming. This is 57 jewelers. So my left is Mike. In the center is Ads. To the right is Torres. So I want to say good afternoon, man. How's things going? Alhamdulillah, bro. Same old man. Yeah, man. Working. Yeah, bro, I know it's gonna sound corny, bro, but yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to. Mike, what you, what you got on your wrist, bro? I've got a Rolex uh, Daytona discontinued John Mayer. Yeah, it's a lovely piece. It's a lovely piece. And what you got? What you, what you got? I've got Silicon Bass down for the summer. Date just 41. This one's my favourite piece. This one's a Richard Lady 10. Clean. Clean, clean, clean. clean. All right, so bro, I want to get to it, bro. So, like, first off, why 57 Jewelers? Is there anything significant with the name or how did you guys come to it? So, basically, the name was, yeah, you know you have calling codes for countries. Um, Morocco's calling code is plus 212. Colombia is plus 57. What was Nigeria's calling code again? I can't remember. But you know what I mean? You know the calling codes? We flipped, we, we did a, a coin flick or whatever to decide who's, um, what's the name going to be because we was going to name it along those lines and then where Torres won, we named it 57 for Colombia's calling code. He's Colombian, that's right, yeah. Ah, uh, bro, but why get into the jewellery game, like, initially? Like, I want to start with you because you're a rapper, so you probably bought pieces before you yeah. get me that. Um, what was it like for you? Do you know what it is? I've been buying jewellery basically half my life since I was 14, 15. Um, and I've just always felt like, as I got older anyway, I was doing research and I always felt like, um, like I was just being overcharged most of the time. And then, yeah, as time went on, time went on, I just said, you know, I'm tired of being a consumer of, of jewellery. Let me actually get into the business. I'm, I've, I've done my uh, research. I'm knowledgeable on it now. And yeah, I'm sure I can 100,000% offer better prices than the majority of people. Uh, let, me, let me stop scared there. Torres, what made you actually want to get involved in the business? Do you know what? I never actually wanted to be a jeweler, jeweler. But me and bro, we used to always spend our time buying kettles, chopping and changing kettles. Then one day we went to Hand Garden to, I think you wanted to buy the Daytona, and I wanted to buy a Platinum Day. I can't even remember what watch it was. And most come seeing us, it's like, oh, you, I see you used to lock down here all the time, always buying watches. Why don't you just start trading? There's an office there. Then obviously dirty being dirty. It was like, yeah, we'll take it now. <laughs> we'll take it right now. How much is it? We'll put the piece down right now. So, I'm on whatever have a browser then. Yeah. When I got the piece, put it down next day. Putting down stop. Buying watches. Obviously, we've had a lot of help. Instagram, and whatnot, people helping us. And then... Just gone from there. Yeah, Mike. For you though, how do you how do you see it like like entering this kind of business though? Mm, to be fair, I want to say a year ago. Obviously, certain things was happening in my life prior to a conversation I had with Ads and Torres, and um, what had happened was we created a group chat, and we was kind of like we were just always talking about like I think that's when the market was kind of high for watches and investment pieces and et cetera. And what, what had happened was we had a conversation about like, guys, let's just make like a, like just think about trading and whatnot. And then at the time, again, like I said, I was going through some stuff. So I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to release kind of funds to do X, Y, and Z. And they was like, look, don't worry about that. We know that you have the same drive as us to go and do it. So we said, you know what, we'll kind of come back to the topic, unfortunately. A few weeks after, I'd ended up going on holiday, I would like to say. And um, 
obviously Tor, uh, Torres, kind of the same thing. And then um, probably I came out, well, say back from holiday. And um, it was just kind of a thing where I felt like I was at the age where it's like, it's either make or break now. There's something I kind of need to put my attention to, to kind of create some sort of, I don't know what I can say, like, um, I'm trying to find, find the right word, like something to just kind of build with family because at the end of the day, these are my family. I've known them since I can remember and so was Torres. So it's kind of a thing where full circle moment, he just randomly called me. I was at home and he called me and he was like, bro, remember that idea we had before you went on holiday? I was like, yeah. He said, what, what's your thoughts on it? I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm down. Like I'm tired of kind of going through this revolving door. He was like, so you're serious? Yeah, this is me. Yeah, he said, so if I call you tomorrow, at X at two o'clock, are you able to come to where you need to come to? It's me, yes. You're like, cool. Phone me at two o'clock. I was thinking, all right, Sim, how long can it take for you to get down to Hatton Garden? I was like, oh, not long. Sim, all right, cool, I'm waiting for you. He came, gave me the address. I pulled up, got out of the car, walked in. Thinking, I oh, was going on this, Sim. This is the plan that like, we've done it now. So, yeah, you're here tomorrow, let's go. I was thinking, all right, cool. Like, so it's something we needed to do, you know? So from then it's been full steam ahead. Yeah, ads, do you know what yeah, like I don't wanna like overgas it, but that's a that's a real friend there, you get me? Like like proper like like trying to show the man them um, a way out of situations, bro. What made you believe that like you should revisit it with, with with Mike though? Um what do you mean then? Like in terms of like when he when you called him back again and said, Look, yeah you're down, like, some other people have thought like, ah, oh, let me just go somewhere else or not even reach out the opportunity again. Do you know what it is, bro? It's some, some things in life you can't buy. And that's what Michael has to offer, um, Abdullah. He, his trust, the trust is very, very high. So I would, yeah, the, the first person, one of the only people I thought of that, like, if, for example, if I'm not in the store, Torres not in the store, and uh, Michael's in there with a million pound of jewelry. I don't, for one second, feel worried or anything like that because I know my dear brother. That's what it is. So that's that was one of the main reasons why I always said, yeah, no, Max, 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 because there's not a lot of people like that that I know. And yeah, that was the main thing. And just to interject as well, I've I think returning from my holiday, I've had three conversations that I feel like touched home. And one of them was the first time when I after I came, and I saw him. I remember we he came to see me when I was on holiday. We had a brief conversation, but it wasn't too in depth because of the time. But I remember when I came to his house to see him and his daughter and his family, and we were speaking, and just certain things he said to me. It kind of, you know, when you kind of sit there and you're kind of like, you know what, like you know, you got a lot of friends. People have friends where it's like. They're like, oh, you should be doing this, that, and the third. Like, there's a there's a Kodak Black lyric that I always kind of think of. It's when, I think he said something about, Meek said um, I should have 50 M's. Then I told him, okay, why don't you help me then? It's it's all good and well you saying, oh, someone needs to do this. But as a friend, or I don't even call him for he's my brother. So as a brother, it's like, he's giving me something to kind of work to, to kind of change my life and kind of be like, you know what, look, this is the avenue to go to. Let's do this. And I feel like you can't, I just feel like when it comes to certain bonds like that, I can't let him down. Because there's one thing I could say is the majority of my life, I've had a good support system in the sense of friends. Like if you know people that know us, it's been the same friends since the 90s. I like, you know what I mean? So I just, I'm just grateful to have such good, clean-hearted people in my life. So I just felt like, you know what? This is a chance I could, not chance, but I don't want to say chance, but this is something I can kind of put my all into to kind of make it work. So, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm getting it wrong, but correct me where I, if I am. So it seems like, Torres, you and Ads more were doing the watch stuff before yeah. getting on board, yeah. Definitely. So now you're, we're going we're gonna to make it full circle. So now you guys are in the marketplace, right? I just want to get to the to the part which I feel is kind of controversial. Like, how the other jewelers, and you can all chime in. How's the other jewelers thinking? Because basically, Hatton Gardens like where it all happens, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so I'm I'm pretty sure they're not happy with this. What they will probably deem as undercutting the market, 
because at a point they're going to be losing a bit of money. It may not be that much, but do you get what I mean? So how do you see it now that you guys have gone into the selling game? Is this we're not we're not we're not in the jewelry business to make friends or? Like, like I like to say, we're not here to, to make the jewellers happy, we're here to make the customers happy. And in our first like four weeks of being open in the arcade, we've got um, a new place now, our own shop, but we was in the arcade, everyone knows where the arcade is in Hatton Garden, it's literally the heart of Hatton. So you're in there with 45 other independent jewellers and what it was when we first moved in, some of our items were so cheap that no names being mentioned, obviously I had jewellers come up to me and say, bro, you need to put your prices up because man can't sell no more, bro, because everyone's just buying it off you lot. And, I, and in my head, I'm thinking, but what's that got to do with me, bro? That's what I'm here for. I'm here to sell, to feed my brothers, my family, and to build my brand. You're telling me to come and put my prices down so that you can sell your stuff for hire. It has to make sense. And when it doesn't make sense, I don't respect it. And that's what I've learned. Like, so much people are out for themselves in the jewellery business, it's a, it's a cold industry. It's not, there's some people who are genuine, a lot of people who are genuine that I can vouch for. But again, at the same time, a lot of people are not and they're just out for themselves. So, yeah. I feel like, like for someone to actually come to you and say, look, yo, like, fix your prices so that we can still maintain yeah. the, a bit of a bump. I yeah, feel that's kind of, it's, it's a little brazen, like, because if you weren't in the picture, bro, it's the customers or the consumers are getting bumped. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, yeah, that's what it is, man, so. All right, so when they say that to you, is it like a face-to-face -face conversation? Yeah, face-to-face. -face. How do you respond Literally to it? Literally came to my store and I said, no, you should put your prices down. <laughs> that's my response. And do you know what's mad? He went and put his prices down. Yeah. Now he's selling for the same price as me. Yeah, because he's watched me sell that specific item. I've sold it like, 10 to 20 times before he sold one. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, without me being too specific, because I don't even want the brother to know I'm talking about him, but it's, it, that's what it is. And, and again, not, not going into specifics, but is this a profitable business? Still, Because I'm thinking like, obviously there must there's markups somewhere on your end, right? Mm -hmm. But is it profitable? Because like, that's what, I think that's what people are looking at. Like, if it's so cheap, like, that like, Probably thinking, how are you getting it so cheap? You don't have to reveal it. But these are the questions that be thinking, like, wow, why is your thing so much cheaper than everyone else? I'll give you an example because um, obviously there's, we, we get watches for trade price, yeah? So all majority of jewelers get watches for the same prices, yeah? Some know other people where they can get a little bit cheaper, but I'm saying UK, Hatton Gardens, London, we all get watches for the same prices, yeah? And for example, this John Mayer, I'm just giving an example. Let's say we pick it up for uh, 58 grand. We, we're happy to sell it at 60 grand. We're happy to put in 58 grand to make two grand profit. Another jeweler would buy that for 58 grand and stick it up for 70, 72. It's just too greedy. We don't, we don't try to make 15 grand profit off of one watch. That's other people's method. We don't, we don't follow that method. We have our own. So by the time people sell one watch and make 15 grand profit, our method is we've already sold 10 smaller ones and got the same. And that's 10 customers in and out our store that day. So you're looking more on a volume-based business? Yeah, and we keep keeping more people happy. Yeah, quantity, yeah. yeah. That's, that's important as well. Because I think what I'm seeing now is, even the Instagram, I'm seeing like how, when I first saw the Instagram page, I think I sent a DM. I don't know who saw the DM. I don't know if it was your wife. I was like, because I was like saying I wanted to. I was like, I want to buy something, and I was just like, wait, is this thing real though? I was looking. No, no, bro. I was looking. I was thinking, is it real? I'll be a Christian. When you go into it, you're like, you're looking at the prices. It's like, bro. You sounds like my wife, bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you go there, you're like thinking like, yeah, I could, I could probably buy. One. I mean, nah, I'm not rich like that. But I'm thinking that, bro. Like every month, I could probably just go in and cop yeah. something. Do you know what's another model? Yeah. So you funny you say that, yeah. Because I put up a watch one time, yeah? It was a 2023 date, just 41, yeah? And I put it up, I think it was like seven grand or six bag nine. 2023, full set on one. And I put on my story, cheapest in the world. Because I was so confident it was the cheapest one in the world. And I even said, if you find me one cheaper, I'll buy it 
and I'll give you a thousand pounds for finding it. No one couldn't find it. I, I sold that watch because of that technique. Because I put it up and I said, if you find me one cheaper, I will pay you. So they went, searched the whole world, couldn't find one cheaper and then realized, hold on, that's an actual bargain, you know. The watch was sold. Yeah, so that's how confident I am. When I put that up, it means I've done my research and it's the cheapest in the world. Okay, so now research. So let's get, let's get into the... Um so you guys also do custom pieces, yeah, yeah. grills, um, what's the other type of things that you guys are selling in, in the shop? We do grills, we do uh, custom yeah. pendants, chains, bracelets, rings, uh, from rings. start to finish jewellery, yeah. From silver to platinum to gold to 24 karat gold, to you could come and buy straight diamonds off us if you want. Yeah, you could buy ounces of gold bars. We, we sell everything. Stop. Try to kind of market it for everyone. Cater for everyone. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't have as much, if you don't have like thousands and thousands of pounds to spend on a watch or jewelry, we've got stuff that could fit your budget. You know, we try to kind of make sure that we cater to everyone in that aspect. Because a lot of jewelry uh, jewelers, when you go there, it's more of high end stuff, and they kind of obviously. I'm not saying that you know. If I'm not saying not to be too expensive or whatnot, because whatever price you put on your product is for you. You feel like that's how much your products should go for. You should, but for us, I just feel like we need to kind of care for everyone, else, everyone, because not everyone's got money. You know, people like to look good, so especially cost of living, all of that stuff. So, yeah. So why why now put your face to this um, ads? Why now? Just to let people know who they're buying from, just to build the trust in the company. Obviously, people know me for many years. If you buy something from me, I'm not running away. I've been here. <laughs> I've planned to be here. Um, so, yeah, it's just to, to gain that little bit more trust in the company, especially as a startup brand. With jewellery as well, especially, like, you really do need to have some form of trust for people to come and buy a 100 grand watch off you, 60 grand watch off you, if, if they want a 20 grand chain. There has to be some form of trust level. So that's the only reason I'm putting my face to it. And this is gonna sound ignorant, but I'm gonna say, bro, even even here knows amounts, bro. Like the average person is gonna think, bro, that's like how like do people what's the payment? Like, how do people bro, I've never purchased anything of sixty grand, bro. Yeah. Like what is that you just like So we can <laughs> we can take a maximum amount of cash is eight thousand pounds, which will equivalent to ten thousand euros roughly. And the rest is usually paid either by card or straight into our business account. What kind of um, I want to say, what kind of kind of like security checks you have to do to make sure that people aren't trying to? So we take we print people's passports, photos. That's when they're selling us a watch, and even when buying. Um, so yeah, our security checks are done just like anywhere else. Yeah. So if you're making a big purchase, even normal purchases, we tend to ask for ID. You know, I've kind of, we've actually not sold someone something because they didn't have any ID. We didn't feel comfortable in not taking a form of ID from them. So, so but why is that though? Just for that? Yeah, just for security because... For example, let's say we buy, someone sells us this watch today. We do a watch check on the watch register. It comes back fine. Today is fine. When he sells us the watch, he goes home, reports it stolen. Yeah. At least we have his ID, his papers, mm -hmm. everything to say, yo, listen, the watch has come back stolen. We need our money back, sort of thing. And then the other part of the thing is that because you were telling me that you travel a lot to like different countries yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. What what part of that is in what part of that do you need to do for the business? Is that like is that where you're going to get the source or like? You know? Yeah, it's to mainly meet other traders, watch traders who we offering the watches at a, a bit of a lower rate. It's also to find better rates on gold, on diamonds. And yeah, mainly just for that, as you know, the labour in England is quite expensive on setting stones, casting gold. So in other countries like Dubai, um, China, it's not as cheap on the labour. India, they're very good with gold there. It's not as high. So that's it's just about branching out. Yeah, we've been to... Did you, no, you didn't come in. No, I went, I went with Taz for three days. It was brief, but we plan to go back. Yeah, this is serious. Though. This is like a proper serious. This is a, it's a serious operation. And you know, I think it's also important. And it's not this whole redemption thing, but you wouldn't associate two guys who went on holiday 
with another guy from Brixton is a rapper who's able to set up this type of scale of business. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. I think you lot should definitely be, um, to be proud of that, man. That's like, because, bro, people like myself went to uni, bro. I couldn't even, I wouldn't even have thought about even getting into that business or even have friends who actually even want to undertake that. What, what, are the, what are some of the difficult parts of, the, of one having a startup and getting into this type of industry? You know what, is at first, I feel like, see that hat and garden is full of vultures, like, let's be real, so mm. who's getting bumped left, right and centre for kills, you know what I'm saying? So I feel that's that, and getting a lot of people's trust, so I feel, because obviously, where we come from, we're not like, you know, average mm. you know what I'm saying? So just getting people's trust, no, no one really trusted at first, like I said, no one was taking us in, like, they were taking us in, but to kind of use us. Think, you know what I'm saying? These lot have just set up fresh fish, mm -hmm. they've got money to spend, mm -hmm. and let's be real, we was getting bumped left, right, and centre. But now I feel like it's getting easier because we're, we're learning about watches more, so we know you can't bump us no more, you know what I'm saying? So that, that was the difficult part, just getting past that. The to be fair, there was quite a few jewellers that, one or two, that, mm, actually, let me just say, there's more than one or two, because over the years, when purchasing stuff from us, they kind of recognise, obviously they know ads and Torres has bought a lot of stuff. So certain jewellers would be like, oh yeah, I remember you, you, bought, you came with. So when they kind of had that rapport, I feel like they, can't, they felt a bit warmer to kind of be like, look, don't do this, don't do that. If they say this, that like kind of just, you know, even though they could see it was kind of, I don't know, quote unquote, wet behind the ears. So they could kind of be like, all right, don't do that or don't buy it for that. To be like, look, I got, you know what I mean? So, but again, it's just, Hang Garden's a bit, it's, it's, a, it's a, it's a funny place, but yeah, we, uh, we're, we're doing well, we're doing well. Do you, um, what's I gonna say to you? So, do you have your rapper friends like shouting you now, bro, saying, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. I look after them, man, man yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they must, but they must really now know how much they've been getting bumped. Without saying names, yeah. What, what, without saying names or making it specific, like, give me an example of like what you would know from your knowledge of like what the margins of bump someone's getting. Without saying names, without saying like it could be like they they bought the piece for fifty or really only ten. Like what cool. if you know so from what you know? From from what I know, there's a a lot of people out here, yeah. And see, jewelers are not gonna like me for this one, you know. But there's a lot of people out here paying for top-end stones and they're receiving lab diamonds, yeah? That's what's going on. They can do their own research on that. I've got no time to explain to them what lab diamonds are and naturals, the difference. All I'm saying to them is people have been paying for natural diamonds and have been getting labs instead. And that's what's going on. We're honest at 57. If you want labs, we give you labs. You want naturals, we give you naturals. But one thing we're not going to do is charge you natural price for labs. We don't do that here. So with that being said, I obviously I'm going to start doing my Googles. But back to the question, like, what, if someone's buying a, what type of chain is someone bought you for? Right, you got so 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 I've seen I've, I've there's people no names whatever they've they've bought chains for like forty five bags and really and truly we could have did that for like nineteen to eighteen. Around them prices. Okay, and again, no names being mentioned, but just the psychology of like purchasing. Why, like, do people buy based on price or based on perception or who they or where they get it from? It's mainly it, brands. It's the same it? watches, right? It's, it's, yeah. It's, as long as it's a I'll, Rolex, it's a Rolex. I was, yeah, because obviously not to say certain uh, jewelers' names, but certain jewelers, if you go on their Instagram pages or so, like you hear, you see a watch and you'll be like. There's no way they're selling that for that price. And then the next post may be out the door. So it's like, wait, someone's literally gone there and you spent that amount of money on that when you could have went there where they're selling it for, you know what I mean? So I want a lot of customers to know that you are not paying for that product, you're paying for that brand. So we have the, we know the names of certain high level jewelers that's in terms of their names are up there. So. When you're going there, please be mindful that you're not paying that price for that watch. So you could buy it from there 
and come to us and be like, oh, I bought this for here, so can I get it for that? And we're going to tell you there's no way on God's green earth <laughs> that we're paying for that. Yeah, for fact. Just, just this morning, bro, a customer popped in. He wanted to sell his Daytona. Uh, what was it? I think it was an ivory Dow or something like that, yeah? yeah? He had paid for it 58 grand, not even too long ago. So it's not like when prices were sky high. And he's trying to sell the watch now, yeah? So he's come to me and he said, how much would you take this for? And I said, I sell those for 34. So I'll take it, me being polite, for 31. Because I don't need it right now and it's a very hard watch to sell. Mm. He goes, oh, bro, I bought this for 58. I said, okay, so take it to the jeweler you bought it from. <laughs> for real? Hmm. Take it to the guy you bought it from. The thing is, you've already gone to him and he's even given you a lower rate. And that's the guy you've bought it from. That's the guy you, trusted. That's yeah. the guy you bought it from. So don't, and that's where it is, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? So people live and learn, innit? It's a bit random, but it reminds me a bit of like, it's a bit like the music business when you hear people, they, they sign a deal and you're thinking, bro, you got bumped, you know? Yeah. It's the it's same thing, man. There's bumping in every aspect yeah. and hustle in the world, whether that's football, wrestling, casino, bookies, chicken and chip shop man's bumping you, yeah. putting up the prices on the hot wings. Yeah. It's the life, bro, and that's what it is. With jewellery, because it's such an expensive game, you can get bumped severely. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So it's there's levels, in it? So people genuinely need to do research when they're buying, save some money when you can. Yeah. Don't don't buy a watch to then lose 10 grand on it. That's It's not making sense. And it, that goes to like a conversation we had off camera in terms of customers when they come in and they're like, oh, I'm looking at this watch. Is this a good investment piece? Remember when I was saying to you, mm -hmm. I always kind of told the customer, Forget about if it's an investment piece. Just make sure you like the watch because the market's so flimsy that one day it could be through the roof and the next day it could be down. So yeah, yeah. just ensure that you genuinely like the watch before you purchase it. Don't buy it and think, all oh, right, I'm going to make this amount of money because re realistically, if you're not selling it to someone else on the street or like a private seller, a trader's not going to buy it for what you think he's going to buy it for mm -hmm. unless it's gone significantly higher yeah so i just think customers should bear that in mind as well yeah so do, do you guys see the demographic of like the type of people buying watches is it, is it more women is it more like white people black people like what who are your consumers now who are coming to 57 our, our consumers are mixed it's everything yeah we have people coming from out of london we have um people like in London, young people, older people, ladies. We have people, yeah, people, yeah. Two people came from abroad because the prices were too mad. They came, um, yeah, man. Mainly, we had people come for their children buy like twenty six mm Ro Rolexes. We sell those all day long. You can get a good one for like two grand off us. We sell them cheap. Do you, are, do you, are people coming to your store to like buy stuff to start their own businesses? Yeah, well, a lot of traders come to us now. Yeah. A lot of traders come and buy stuff off us to go sell on to their client for more. So in, I think this week we've sold more to traders than we have to customers. Yeah. And that's a probably a good business model also then. Cause yeah, because yeah, now we're, we're selling to the, in the trade and to the end user. So we have both. All right, so again, just me kind of like digging. Surely like people must be thinking, but where's the plug? Because once they got the same plug you got, they need to come. So are you protective of your your plugs? One hundred percent. Because that 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 your plug or plugs, that's actually in effect your whole. Yeah, like because they can't get the plug though. Because it even took us time to get the plug, and, like, to get verified, to get the respect, to even get into certain chats to get these. Even now we're still struggling to get into certain chats. The difference is, bro. Even if they do get the plug, like I mentioned earlier, let's say they can they make um. Let's say they make a ring for five bags. They're going to want to sell it for 10. That's the difference. So find the plug as much as you want. Man's still going to sell cheaper than you. Because you're just too greedy. They're just too greedy out here. And we're not. We don't, we don't sell for mad high. We literally sell at what we think is fair for everyone to be happy. Us, the customer, everyone. And then that's it. The ball keeps rolling like that. They go back to their town. And they big us up in their little community. I got this from 57. This is the prep. Then their little people come through and that's what keeps us going. But Mike, you, were you saying there's still places that you guys 
<clears throat> is there like a, a ceiling of like certain watches you guys want to get into, but you don't have access to it or like, how, do, how does it work in the watch game? Is there certain things where it's like, you'd really want to get your, because I heard you and Christian talking about certain watches mm -hmm. and it's like, they're not, you can't just get them. Yeah, like the watch that Christian showed us earlier on his phone is an absolute crazy piece. I believe it's one of 30, but don't quote me on that. And yeah, like Christian said, it goes for around 1.8, averagely to 2.4 million pounds. So it's a, it was a double-sided, it's a very, very rare piece. So those sort of pieces, they don't come by every day. So yeah, we're still trying to meet the right people to get into the bigger ones, like the APs, the one of tens that are 400K for one. We, 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 we yet to see one. So yeah, we're still growing and learning every day. When you, when you, when you kind of get into that kind of space of things, is it going to be more seen as like, I don't know, concierge type selling because watches at that price point, some people ain't going to want to come into the store. Is it going to be out of office yeah. hours for them to come and collect it? Or? Yeah, we do VIP drop-off services. Are you not doing do that currently now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We do VIP drop-offs. We, yeah, we would literally come and drop it to you with our personal chauffeur. Yeah, even um, the new office we've got, because we just, we're, we're in talks of moving to a new office. And the way it is, is for people to come in and be comfortable. And be comfortable without yeah. being seen. Yeah. So we're still going to be around the corner to Hatton Garden, literally 30 seconds walk from it, but you're just not in that environment. It's more chill. Yeah. You can come chill. Because a lot of the customers do feel like, they feel like a bit, not unsafe. I don't want to say unsafe, but you know, they're thinking, oh, I just spent X amount of uh, yeah. pounds. Bro, I've got like that. Do you remember the woman? That put her in the cost of Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, other day we sold a Rolex, yeah? And the woman was so scared, I gave her our jewellery bag that says 57 jewellers. She's like, no, 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 put it in that. And she pointed at our Costa bag that we just ate tuna sandwich from. Yeah. So we imagine putting her Rolex in the Costa bag. There's a good friend of ours, he's another jeweller, his name's called Terry, Tell's Time. Tell and yet, big up Tell. Big up Tell, yeah. And he's got um, a Yachtmaster 40, uh, I think st uh, steel and gold he with a blue. He wears it every day, and I always ask like, how much you sell. He said, Nah, I never sell this does one. Does not let that go. Never sell. If you Listen, see him, the man's got a whole collection. Yeah. He does not take that off. Because that's the he said that's one of his first ever watches he bought, yeah. and told this, and he bought that well over twelve years ago. He said, so, you know, again, like you said, when you buy your first roller, it's just yeah. or not even a roller, just watch in general. You have so much sentimental. Value to it. And Sometimes it's not about yeah. money. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Even just the memories it, it will bring you. Exactly, it, yeah. That's that's the main thing. You it's can't buy that. It, it took a while for me to understand that, but now when people say it, like I kind of I relate to it a lot when they talk about it because it's like, like you you gain that understanding. It's more than just that. Oh yeah, I've got a Rolex or an AP or a, mm -hmm. there's a story behind it. Do you know what I mean? It's the journey, journey, yeah. journey to get to that point. Yeah, and that's, that's like true. a problem. You know, I've had a watch before and it's not, it's not like the best watch in the world, but yeah. when I sold it, 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 it broke my heart. So and, uh, that is a, the Olive Alibers, you know, the, that the rose gold yeah. with the green face. Yeah, it's, about, it's about, it's about, how much did that, like 40k? Yeah. Yeah. He had it when it was like 21, he bought it for like 21 or something. Yeah. Then sold it, and then it went to seventy five. Then he bought it back, <laughs> and then because you, he fights with the thoughts. Like, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted that watch yeah, back. Exactly. I, I, had, yeah. I had a mad yeah. collection, but I needed that watch back. That's what I'm mean. saying. That's my watch. Yeah, you, you feel connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, remember when your little cousin came with his friend and he wanted to sell his um, grandfather's um, Rolex? Yeah. And then we were just and then tell tell big up tell again. Tell was like. Okay, we've assessed it for you. You're gonna get this amount. You think that's worth you, your the memory of your grandfather? And we told him, he said, don't sell that. Don't sell it. He still has the box, the papers. It's a classic watch from like 19. It was like from 1972 or some madness like that. And it was just like, you wanna sell this for what? And you, you're just gonna piss it away doing what? Buying balloons and drinking. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's, it's just like, bro, you don't need to just. Take time, man. It's a lot, though, man. It is. It is. It's like once you do get into it, it, it. Cause I used to have a naive thought about watches, but that's more because I was looking at a bus stand. Yeah. But then I see like some other guys are like, nah, bro. It's like, like when when you go to certain places, you know, like you feel like naked if you ain't taking yeah. your watch with you, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now nah, it's definitely good, though, man. I think, and the sentiment of what you guys are trying to do, making it more accessible for people to 
have their own moments and mm. not feel like boxed out financially yeah. is um, it's commendable. But I was, I was going to ask you this, this now, right? Where do you see the company going? Do you see it just staying in, in London? Do you see it going overseas? Like, how, where, not the actual game plan, but kind of like what should be expected from you guys in the next few years as, as a brand? Well, obviously, we, we definitely want a shop front on Hatton's massive 57 like as you see age rulers ice jewels big up all of them lot we want a shop front that's our end goal for hattons is a massive shop front but we are trying to turn to a franchise and a brand so there's a difference between being a jeweler and being a brand the five seven brand 57 brand we, we want to make our own chains our own rings and stock those in shops where it has our logo on it we want to be a franchise where in the years to come, obviously, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. We want Fifty Seven to be a brand in itself, and the jewel. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So, just to kind of separate ourselves from the rest. Son, yeah. Even when I was speaking to his son, we was talking about watches in front of his son, and then. I told his son, say, Adam, you got to listen because this is going to be yours. <laughs> You're going to be in this, you know what I mean? So, you know, we just want just some financial freedom for our loved ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just something to kind of say we have because I feel like, especially from a lot of people that come from our background, just thinking about it, like, there's so many of them that you lot did all of this stuff and you don't have nothing. Like, not to disrespect them or just make them feel low, but it's just like, I don't want to be that, quote unquote, just another story from someone from a certain council estate living, you know what I mean? Like, I want something, you know? It's, it's sometimes it, it upsets me when I go back, see my mum and it's like, you're still living a certain type of way or you're still here. It's just like, I just want more. You know, and the reality is, it's like, a lot of us are super connected to our mums. But bro, when you actually think about Yo, to actually move your mum. Mm. One, they the like don't want to move. Yeah. Because yeah, this is yeah. all they want to, this is all they know. Yeah, yeah. And you take them somewhere else, bro, they, they just feel like they're just lonely, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, if the, but the financial thing to actually like move them out and put them somewhere nice, bro, yeah. the access to resources is yeah. like, it don't just come exactly. like that, bro. Mm-hmm. But I believe like what Christian was saying, like if we start to start future proofing, I start like having things that we can actually pass. That's the game. You have something like you're saying about the watch you'll give your son. Of course. Like this is it's it can't just be like just for it can't be just for girls, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like no, you can't. Even, even the other day, I even forgot to talk. I was talking about it, but something happened and I came off topic. Even like I went to see my my dad like a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking to him about something, and then he had like it was like a, a business card or something. And I was like, oh, Dad, I remember being young when we used to be in the house. We used to see this all over. What is this? It's like it was my printing company. And then I was like, you had a printing company? He's like, yeah, I've, I've been had a printing company. Like, he used to import peanuts from Nigeria, bottle them up, and sell them to, like, the little community. But I said, so why didn't you go forward? He's like, because I had kids. Like, you know, sometimes when you're chasing a dream, it's like you got to put responsibilities before your dream. And he kind of was like, don't, obviously, you're still at the age where you're able to kind of do certain things. And he's like, just put your all in your dream. So if it, he said, just, if it means sacrificing going out, you might be speaking to a girl you like and she wants to go out for dinner, just kind of say no, like kind of just put your all into sacrificing, like putting it into that. Because after years go by, it's, it's going to be good for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's powerful, man. Yeah. Powerful man, I think yeah, like seeing this, seeing this, um, and I, I think I clocked on. You guys have done well on socials. Like. We've got something mad as well loading up. Yeah, it's where I wouldn't say trying. We are making the biggest handmade Cuban in the world. So I think right now the biggest one is handmade. Yeah, is three point five kilograms. So on YouTube, and my, my Miami Cuban link made it. We're trying to do 3.8. So, yeah, when that touches base, yeah, man's gonna know. Thing is serious, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an absolute madness. Hey, we might have to contact Guinness Book of Record, World Records for that one. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah. yeah. yeah so we've got we've got a couple mad internet breakers loading up. I don't want to say too much, but that's just one of our that's our lower ones. Yeah, lower ones. Yeah. You get me? So, but the other ones, yeah, we're loading, man. We're loading. We're obviously we're mainly social media based, isn't it? So. I won't say lower ones, but it's in contrast to what's coming. It's kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the one that I could give you. Look, I could yeah. tell you. Look. Yeah, the other ones I can't say. Now we've seen. We've been seeing you working as well, man. Yeah. Watch a lot of your stuff, man. I like I like the way. Yeah, I like I like the way you broke down certain. Not, not, not to make the people see, show their vulnerable side, but I like the way you kind of dissected certain well, points to make them. Yeah, you went in depth and you get the answer. Yeah, I feel like. It, yeah, yeah, I feel like right now there's a lot of people that's just interviewing people and just doing foolishness, like talking about foolishness. You know, I like to watch stuff and learn things. You know what I mean? So, I'll be have to big you up, man. No, I appreciate I forgot I had this on, bro. Yeah. I forgot it was on the vintage one. Yeah. <laughs> this is, is it, are we still rolling? Yeah. Oh yeah, this is a vintage piece. I literally forgot wait, I was wait, wearing this. <laughs> this is um, it's a Rolex fifteen hundred, uh, vintage nineteen seventy one. Um, if you're watching this, then for you, you can take it for two point two k. That's a thirty four man. Yeah, of course. <laughs> How you know you had this? You know? I forgot I had it on my wrist. I literally picked it up in the morning, wait, bro. It's a Rolex, the model number is for a 1500 Rolex 1500, 1971 vintage, 34mm. 2.2. Yeah, so if they watch this interview and come through the interview, 2.2. If not, 2.8. <laughs> <laughs>